Hi, this is E. David Crawford, Editor-in-Chief of Grand Rounds in Urology. One of the significant challenges in the detection of prostate cancer is finding men who have a significant prostate cancer who would benefit from treatment and letting those uh, escape that would have low-grade cancers and people that have negative biopsies. We have had a number of presentations in Grand Rounds in Urology with risk calculators and other ways to focused on who needs to be evaluated. I'm very pleased to have join us today uh, a real international expert in prostate cancer, a good friend over the years, a leader in urologic oncology, Joe Presti. Joe is a surgical urologic oncologist and uh, lead for Kaiser Northern California. In that uh, area, there are approximately 4.3 million lives. So Joe's going to share with us something very excited. It was published in, in, in June, and uh, it is about Kaiser Permanente's Prostate Cancer Risk Calculator 1.0. Joe, thanks for joining us. Well, well thank you, David. It's a pleasure to uh, be invited to speak here. And so this is a new calculator that we developed. And, uh, you know, before we talk about our calculator in particular, I think people may ask, well, do we really need another risk calculator? There are many out there. But there are some issues with many of these, and I'd like to briefly review that. First off, all calculators oversimplify the concept of race. Now, we know prostate cancer has a significant difference with both incidence and mortality as a function of race. Uh, we know African Americans are at a much higher risk of the disease and a higher uh, mortality, but we also know Asians are uh, at a lower risk to develop the disease and have lower mortality in compared to Caucasians. But all calculators really oversimplify the concept. They really just dichotomize it to being African American or not. The other issue with other calculators is there many of them were based on old systematic biopsy schemes such as a sexton biopsy, whereas today, as you know, most people do extended schemes of 12 or 14 cores. These other calculators were really retrospective secondary analyses uh, from either clinical trials or referral populations. They've often spanned many years, and it's quite possible the PSA assays varied over time, and even the Gleason grading system has changed over time. And what we've observed is that some of these calculators are very poorly calibrated, and that really relates to the sampling frame from which they were obtained. And I'll explain that in just a bit. Uh, but this really pertains mainly to the prostate cancer prevention trial calculator and the uh, European uh, uh, randomized screening for prostate cancer trial calculator. Now, this is just a, a, a brief uh, summary of some of those other calculators, and I just want to call your attention to a couple of points. Really, let's just focus on the top, the top ones here, the prostate cancer prevention calculator, the original one, and then the 2.0, and then the European trial. Now, first off, just notice the long time span over which these were developed. This is in seven to 10 years for most of them. Uh, in this area, we see the racial breakdown uh, of the uh, populations, and you can see it's really, again, pretty much just dichotomized to either Caucasian or African American. Very importantly, notice the biopsy scheme utilized. We know sextant biopsies miss cancers. They also are notorious for undergrading or misgrading cancers. Uh, but then very importantly, I just want to point this out. The cancer detection rate in these, they were quite low in the order of 17 to 25 percent. And when you look at high-grade cancers, that is, of those cancers, how many of them were high-grade, it was in the order of about 21 percent. Now, the reason I point that out is, remember, these were, uh, the PCPT was a, a clinical trial that pre-selected patients uh, to on entry, that is, they had to have a PSA under 3 and a normal DRE. So you've already pre-selected these patients to be low risk for developing cancer and for developing high-grade cancer. And likewise, the European screening trial was just that. It's a screening trial, and therefore, again, we see a very low incidence of cancer and a low incidence of high-grade cancer. Now, that's quite different from a referral population where people are being referred for an elevated PSA or an abnormal DRE, where these detection rates are quite different, and I'll, I'll go over that in just a bit. But uh, notice, I'm sorry, let me back that up. Uh, notice in the SRC, this is the, uh, the Canadian risk calculator. 
uh, by Dr. Nam, and notice this is a referral population, and notice the difference in cancer detection rate, 40%, and high grade of all the cancers, about half were. So one can imagine that if you were using calculators derived from these trials, you're going to be underestimating the risk of cancer and underestimating the risk of high-grade disease. So what's different about our calculator? Well, first off, I think we're the first prospectively designed calculator. That is, you know, we recognized what some of the issues were on the other calculators, and we first wanted to make sure that we had some tool that could prospectively collect all the relevant clinical variables. And we created this form within our electronic medical record system to do just that. Very importantly, in addition, we also standardize our biopsy schemes. So that is all men who underwent an initial biopsy underwent a 14-core biopsy. That's a standard 12-core. And then we do anterior apical biopsies from both the right and left side. In addition, people who are undergoing repeat biopsies underwent a saturation biopsy of 18 cores. We also had all PSAs run in a standard laboratory. Now, when it comes to uh, the data elements that we collected, here's the list. We looked at age, race, family history, PSA level, DRE, uh, BMI, body mass index, the number of prior biopsy sessions, and prostate volume. And then, of course, we correlated all of this uh, with our pathology outcome, that is, presence or absence of cancer, and what was the grade of that cancer. Now, our analytic approach, we followed tripod guidelines. These were published in uh, 2015 in the Annals of Internal Medicine, and it really should be the gold standard for how risk models are developed and validated. And so we followed those guidelines. We used a split sample design. We took our population. We split it randomly. 70% of the population was for model development, 30% for internal validation. We did a multivariate analysis with three endpoints, no cancer, low-grade cancer, and high-grade cancer. And our multivariate analysis was uh, called a lasso. Uh, type. This is the least absolute shrinkage and selection operator. This is felt to be better than what is typically done, which is the AIC. This is what lasso is actually used in machine learning, and it really is, I think, state-of-the-art multivariate analysis nowadays. We looked at uh, a couple of uh, endpoints, meaning discrimination, that is identifying uh, either high-grade or low-grade cancer, and calibration, um, which I'll talk about in just a bit, but that really relates to the fact of, you know, if you predict that there's about a 20% chance of high-grade cancer, is it really 20% or could it be 30%? You really want to know how well calibrated your calculator is. And this is where the older calculators, that is the PCPT and uh, the ERSPC calculators, really had an issue because they are poorly calibrated. So here's our study population. This was done over about 19 months. We started with about 3,500 men. We did have some missing data. Uh, so we had complete data on almost 3,000. And I just want to call your attention to the outcomes of those biopsies. 50% of them were negative, 29% were high grade. 21% were low grade. So this is typically what we now see in a referral-based population, very different from the yields you saw in the PCPT and the ERSPC calculators. Now here's our multivariate analysis. Um, and uh, let's see if we get our arrows to flip in here. And in the uh, any cancer endpoint, basically the variables that were critical were age, race, and notice for African Americans, they're at an increased risk. Asians are at a decreased risk. And Hispanics are at a decreased risk as well. But other variables that were important in predicting any cancer were PSA level, family history, prior negative biopsy, uh, and digital rectal exam. When it comes to high-grade cancer, uh, those end, uh, those uh, variables that were significant uh, were uh, similar, uh, but family, with the exception of family history dropping out, uh, the Hispanic uh, ethnicity also dropped out, but BMI, that is um, obesity, actually uh, did come into the model. And again, that kind of goes along with what we see epidemiologically. There is data to suggest obesity pretends a uh, worse outcome in prostate cancer patients. So our lasso model then basically 
uh, told us that we should use these variables in our risk calculator, age, race, PSA, BMI, family history, the number of prior negative biopsies. And those variables that I just mentioned are what I'm going to refer to as our core variables because we essentially created three models. Um, one that could be used uh, in the office before you even see the patient. And then model two adds the digital rectal exam. So now you have to do a digital rectal exam and just characterize the prostate as either being firm or not. And then model three added prostate volume. Okay, now here's our discrimination curves. These are our ROC curves for models one, two, and three. And remember model one just has uh, the clinical core variables. Model two adds the digital rectal exam and model three adds both digital rectal exam and volume. You can see on the blue line, the ROC curve for high grade detection and on the red line for the presence of any cancer. And just to summarize those uh, areas under the curve or C statistics, if we use the endpoint of finding high grade cancer. If you just use those clinical core variables, you had an area under the curve of 0.76. Add digital rectal exam, that went up to 0.79. And if you have volume, it's up to 0.85. And it's important to understand when you move an ROC curve by even 0.05, that's actually a very substantial difference. And an area under the curve of 0.85 or 0.8 are really very impressive areas under the curve. You can see when we just look at an endpoint of finding any cancer, those uh, C statistics drop a bit, but they still remain in the very clinical useful um, uh, range. Now I mentioned to you calibration. Again, calibration really relates to the fact of if I predict something is 10% risk of high grade, is it really 10% or is it 15% or 20%? And uh, these are the calibration curves for all three of our models for both endpoints. We have a high grade disease and or any cancer. And when you see the dots on the line, that means you are very well calibrated. And in fact, there is a statistic called the hosmer leemshaw statistic, and that in fact confirms all three of our models are very well calibrated. Now, I just want to uh, finish up here just with a couple of uh, examples. I find these very interesting. And again, we just threw in some examples. What's the risk of high-grade cancer as a function of race in these uh, upper two graphs? And you can see for a given PSA level, let's say a PSA of 10, you can see African-Americans have a risk of high-grade disease. In this example, if he's 50, no family history, normal DRE, that risk might be in the order of 25%. And that is lower for Caucasians and even much lower for Hispanics and Asians. Also, when we looked at number of prior negative biopsy sessions, we saw what I would consider almost like a dose response curve. That is, um, if you uh, look, let's say again, for a given PSA level, let's say of 10, if you've had no prior biopsies, your risk of high grade cancer in this scenario may be as high as 20%. But as the number of prior biopsies goes up, you see an incremental decrease in the risk of finding high-grade disease. And so really just to, uh, to uh, end here, um, there is another excellent risk calculator out there. This is the Prostate Biopsy Collaborative Group that was just published, published about a year and a half ago. Um, and uh, this was in European Urology. This was a, a project driven by Andrew Vickers and many academic institutions. Um, and just to look at their areas under the curve, um, you can see their area under the curve um, C statistic for defining high grade disease was 0.75. Now their model does include DRE. Our model that included DRE had an area under the curve of 0.79. And then if we included volume, uh, which the PBCG calculator did not have, that area under the curve went up to 0.85. Now granted, this is not a head to head comparison. This is a, a, a retrospective comparison of two, two calculators, but we are moving forward with doing just that. We are doing now a, a validation trial looking at the PBCG and, and the prostate cancer uh, risk calculator from Kaiser Permanente, as well as the PCPT risk calculator to really put it head to head to find which calculator is the most clinically relevant. Uh, so with that, I'll stop. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Joe? Thanks very much for sharing that. Uh, you brought up a lot of interesting points and uh, we will, uh, again, thank you. And uh, we will move to the question and answer 
uh, period right now. So we will be leaving this uh, presentation and then moving those of you that uh, are interested can uh, move into the question and answer portal here in Grand Rounds in Urology. Thank you.